Hello. So today we're going to be talking about my 20 items per second sorter concept. Uh, this is a different design shown in the video because the video was a prototype. I changed the title after a little while to reiterate that. So in my design before, the minecarts were shifting back and forth with the piston, which was a fair idea. It wasn't pretty unsta It wasn't very unstable because the pistons were going, it was just one piston and there was no forgetting the block and stuff, but uh, I didn't actually realize that there was this trick with activator rails. So after the expected comments where people claimed I was copying El Mango and then did their typical spiel, I hadn't actually looked too closely at his designs, but I knew that he did do some stuff with quadruple and uh, double speed sorting, and I immediately thought that the quadruple design we were using locking hoppers, which would throttle the design. But as it turns out, he was using a trick like this, where this minecart won't be sucking the items out because it's locked on an activator rail. But when you depower the activator rail, it actually sucks all the items out just fine. And as soon as I learned that, I was able to pretty quickly actually just convert this into an activator rail based design, which is solid state and uh, faster, uh, and silent, not faster. So solid state means there's nothing moving, and silent means it makes no sound. So pretty simple. Now let's address the input and output systems. These are my designs for an expandable, well, scalable. So this can be condensed to a, just a 4 output. It can be upgraded all the way to a 32 output. Now this is a different design for a different video. But in this case, we've got one chest going to two minecarts, and then that's just going to eight droppers. And down here, it's just two minecarts right here going to two minecarts, which are splitting the output into eight hoppers, which is exactly 20 items per second. And so this hopper sorter, not hopper sorter, this minecart sorter design is effectively the speed of eight hoppers. Now the actual footprint is a bit tricky, so you're going to have to kind of ignore all the wiring, because how you power the, the droppers is your idea. All you can really look at, in fairness, are these eight hoppers, so, and then the rest of the system. So it's basically two wide, and then I guess one, two, three, four high. I don't know. I didn't really look too closely at whether or not this was tileable. I was kind of excited to be designing a 20 items per second sorter. So let's see it in action. So at four droppers on a five items per second clock, that is exactly 20 items per second. Let's just throw in a short amount of items. So because uh, I got F3 plus B here, you can see that the minecart hitbox only covers so much of the block. You need to actually make sure that most of the items, all of the items, are aligned on this half of the block. And then you can see that if I access the minecart real quick, it'll actually be properly sorting all of the items effectively once per game pick. And that's pretty much as fast as you can get with a sorter. I can't really think of a way to scale this design because, here let me turn down blocks real quick because uh, the minecart will, if you put two minecarts in the same block, they'll intersect each other and then it'll mess up. So something that kind of bugged me, you know, when people say you copied somebody else, it's pretty annoying because more often than not, it's untrue and then it just shows how little research they've done. Uh, I, did, I thought of something that he didn't and th that was this, where the minecart is actually not on the rail, it's actually sitting on the block. So it's low enough to, ac to be accessed by these hoppers, which are currently uh, unlocked and locked by the activator rail. Judging by pretty a, just a basic item sorter, there's really nothing complicated here. But you need a comparator to read the output because you see if you take the activator rail, it's going to be powered forever. That probably just messed something up, but no, well, all right. So, yeah, you need to use the comparator, which does slow it down, and I think when all the items stop, it usually stops at about 24. Let's just put in a stack. Yeah, so that's basically where it stops, and I've never seen it stop with any less than two items, which is a bit tricky, but, uh, yeah. And then at the bottom design, I just removed the ender chest. Thought I should mention that. So somebody else seemed to get pretty mad that I was throwing the items in the lava. Like, you don't have to distribute the items. I mean... You could just as well put a chest where these droppers are. Uh, you could really do whatever you want. I just decided to toss them in the lava because what else are you going to do with them, you know? Um, yeah, so to deal with this amount of items, you probably would have to distribute them somewhere else and then maybe into like an ice stream of hoppers like over here, but 
you it's really just you do you so that's pretty much the bulk of the explanation uh, I later found out a trick with the activator rails I used a detector rail where you're not exactly on it and uh, the tutorial is effectively that so I've already got a video on my channel on how to build this but I could really just tell you I mean I figured out that you can place minecarts on rails and then just split them apart and then you can just nudge them into the corner and that will affect all four hoppers so from this block you can put a chest on here or whatever it's just one input four output and that's pretty much as basic as you get unless you put a chest over like two hoppers maybe and then if you just put a double chest on top of this or two hoppers hopper minecarts like so uh, directly in the middle lined with a pane then you can get uh, one input so let's uh, wall off this and then kind of get to the tutorial part I'm not going to section this off because it is pretty uh, pretty, pretty easy to, to follow and I don't have to wreck too much here. I should also reiterate as I'm talking that I am getting over a very sudden, violent, and unexpected, well, sudden, violent, and pretty crazy sickness. So I'm doing my best today, but this concept kind of came out of the blue and took me by surprise. So this is what I want to show in this tutorial. I want to demonstrate... Um, exactly what you need to do to build this and what I've done in creating it. So you just need two minecarts in one block like so and then you need a piston so let's grab one of those and then you just need a piston to push the minecart into place and then this is where I found out that trick I used in the other design where the piston can actually suck it back in to and fro and then just break the piston and the minecart will be perfectly evenly on top of both of these minecarts here. So if I place something like a chest, I can easily demonstrate, just kind of bridge the gap here. Uh, I think the input's on the other side actually. So let's do that. So yeah, this one item here is basically going to unload at 40 items per second, and then it's going to be spit out at 20 items per second. And fo it's 40 because you've got two minecarts, but it's only going to these this many outputs so you can see they're gonna start backing up but that's already empty <laughs> so yeah now this is kind of the tricky part and it's a little bit odd how I figured that I'm gonna need a, a detector rail so I had a lot of trouble with aligning the minecart against this uh, cobble wall in the end because I tried aligning it against the pane over here or pushing it from the right and then I realized that I should be pushing the minecart from the left. So let's drop it down one block here. And then that'll have all of its items sucked out. It's going to be kind of a mess. But of course we're not done here, so let's just push it in. And then that'll have the same effect as before. Just get it right up against the cobble wall. And then that seemed to be just the perfect distance where it'll be activating the activator rail. You can test it like so. But it won't actually be sitting on top of it. And in this way it can be right over the minecart, activating the activator, you can see it's even sideways, so the minecart's not even on it. But uh, it activates the activator rail, it's on top of the minecart, and it's also, it, everything works. I had one more point there, but I lost my turn of thought. So let's just push this last block into place. You can really do that however you want. Uh, you are going to need some kind of ice stream or water stream on top of this. I'm um, imagining if you were to need this system, you would need an ice stream. So. Let's get to practicality. Uh, a lot of people mention that. So, is this practical? I don't know. Uh, this thing's not really easily stackable. I mean, you'd have to use observers to cut down on space, but you could put like maybe the same module right next to it and then split all the wiring going to the side and then maybe make a 16 output. I'm not going to worry about that in today's video, but. Um, oh, yeah, actually, right at the end here, you can just that messes up sometimes honestly I don't know uh, I've had this problem before and I've gotten it to work but let's try this so the issue right there is the items got sucked out uh, I can I can honestly say that yeah no I can honestly say that I'm not entirely sure what's wrong with that uh, I'm gonna try putting the mic card in as I kinda talk so whether or not this is practical is really dependent on your needs uh, if you have because you're splitting it to eight hoppers anyway so it's going to get bulkier and bulkier the faster your item sorter is because 
the only, it comes down to this, the only way that you are going to get a, an item in entity form dropped on the ground, like the only way to get that purple block into an inventory, like a dropper, a chest, some kind of storage solution, the only way you're going to do that is uh, is by using hoppers. So no matter how fast your item filter is, no matter how many minecarts you're using, it's always going to end up going into a hopper, and there's really nothing you can do about that. So in this way, you can sort them all very, very fast with one block, but the way it branches out is pretty fast. So yeah, the way I thought that you could probably use observers to speed this up is by pushing them into place, they can create a five second clock. I can probably demonstrate that fairly easily actually. So let's just hop down here. If you have an observer facing away, that'll create a somewhat fast clock. It's pretty, pretty good. This was shown to me by enemy's friend 22. I'm not sure if he came up with it or if somebody else showed him, but if you push it into place with a piston, it gives it that extra update and makes it twice as fast. And then this will go indefinitely, and as far as I'm aware, it doesn't create that many block updates, and if they are, they're pretty moderate. So it's actually pretty lag friendly and could be running maybe even indefinitely. Uh, I haven't tested that at all, but it should be a pretty nice method. But uh, that would just be an extremely compact way of actually powering all the droppers necessary to distribute the items. Um, I'm not entirely sure. So on top of cobble walls, you could probably you could probably also use heads. Uh, I didn't actually test that too much. So let's see. Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> I just rebuilt this whole thing for no reason. Oh my gosh. So it's good that I was talking during this, so I didn't waste too much of your time. But um, the reason the items were being sucked out is because I completely forgot to place the activator rail. Well, <laughs> and maybe the activator rail is important. All right, you know what? Screw it. I'm not. I'm not even gonna edit today. I already mentioned that I'm sick. I'm just kind of going on it. So. Let me actually uh, show you what to do here. So this is a bit of a trick, and I'm not sure if this is going to work in all versions in the future, but it did work for me, so let's demonstrate it. What I've done actually is I've aligned the rails against a pane, and I'm in the direction where the rails don't align where I want them to right away, so let's just break all the items down here, and if you let the minecart fall into place, it'll actually stay aligned against the pane. So in that way it works completely fine, the activator rail will affect it, and it'll be totally good. So I should be able to set this up pretty fast, especially since we've still got the cobble wall there. Uh, I really am sorry about that. I am trying to think while talking and I'm sick. So kind of a lot of things going on here. So let's place this block back here and then get our torch. And now the minecart should be totally fine to calculate. So let's just fill in the sorter items and that'll be completely effective as a as an item sorter as soon as we place this detector rail in place. And then that'll suck out the items and then stop it right away. So let's place this back, grab those, and power the piston. All right, and then as soon as I put the glass back, this should be essentially a functional design. So I wanted to kind of prove that this was easily recreatable as long as you don't mess up like I did by even doing the tutorial on the finished design. So I'm going to wreck what I've already built to show you that this will work. So let's um, place a chest on top of here. Yeah, you don't actually need the blocks, they usually just make it look nice. And fill it up with some slime balls to show you that this thing is completely functional. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the explanation of this. Uh, there's really not a hell of a lot more to say. Um, this is pretty much a perfect design as far as I can tell. Uh, it's it's a perfect uh, 20 items per second design. It really can't be too much smaller. We're using pretty close to the bare minimum amount of items. I, of course, encourage somebody to try their hand at this, see what they can do with what they've learned. Um, somebody was asking how I differentiate this from Mango's design, and, well, by staggering the blocks in kind of like this diagonal pattern, I'm using pretty much the minimum amount of minecarts that you can for this sort of system. And... Um, it's solid state, silent. Um, yeah. Silent can be challenged, but like I said, the input and output, these can be whatever you want. This could be just as well an item stream from a mob farm, or this distribution system could be far away, and you don't even need to be shooting the items out. This could just go somewhere completely different. But that's going to be it for this lengthy little explanation slash tutorial. And... Um,
Why is it doing that? You know what? I don't even care right now. I probably didn't place enough mine carts. I don't know. Whatever. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.